Welcome back to Get Google Ready 2024, and this is where I'm gonna show you how to use every single Google Ads campaign that you need to use in 2024. And in today's lesson, I'm gonna be taking you through the process for correctly setting up a shopping campaign in Google Ads. Now, I am aware that shopping campaigns may have lost a little bit of popularity since Performance Max was introduced in late 2021, but what I do wanna confirm is that moving forward, shopping campaigns still do really have a really relevant place in the ecosphere of Google Ads if you're an e-commerce brand. And as we move into 24, the current reasons and situations where I use shopping campaigns is in the following reasons. And the first one is, is that if you had a standard shopping campaign, so not a smart shopping, but if you have a standard shopping campaign that was set up before the transition from smart shopping to performance max, and you're still seeing really, really good results in that shopping campaign, don't feel like you need to switch it over to performance max. There's nothing wrong with keeping that shopping campaign going. And for me, I've even got some clients that it's only only been in the last two months that I've transitioned their shopping campaigns over to Performance Max. And the only reason for why I do that is if we start to see some diminishing results in our shopping campaigns. So the main thing would be that if you've got some standard shopping campaigns that are performing well, please don't feel like you need to change them. But what I would also do is that if you are starting to see that reduction, that's when you make that change. Some other reasons for why I use standard shopping campaigns, or we'll just call them shopping campaigns now, is that I do use them as a great tool for remarketing. And what I mean by that is that if we've got some other campaigns in our account, so whether it be search, display, or performance max, and we want to target people who have gone to our website, that they may have even added our product to the cart, but they haven't finished that sale, I find a remarketing shopping campaign still providing amazing results. All you need to do is when you do go through that setup is select the audiences that you wanna target. So we're not using observation, we're using targeting the specific audiences and then also set that feed priority to high. So that way, if you've got those users who have already seen your products, even added your product to the cart, they're gonna be seeing that shopping ad from that shopping campaign. And then that way you can put in a better bid limit or even a different target ROAS for that remarketing segment. The other situation where I'm using shopping campaigns a lot is if we've got some active performance max campaigns and we might have four or five or six different product categories and we're noticing that two or three of those product categories just aren't getting the cut through in performance max, we will then set up some individual shopping campaigns to help with some further cut through for those product categories. So what I wanna do right now is, now that we've got that understanding on how to use some of the best uses for shopping campaigns in 2024, I wanna take you through the step-by-step -step process of setting up a shopping campaign. And if you do miss any of these steps, don't worry, because if you follow that link in the description below, what you can get is that you can get my shopping campaign setup guide. And this not only lets you know the different structures that you can use for your shopping campaigns, but it's also got screenshots of all of these steps which I'm about to take you through. So right now, let's jump into a screen share so I can show you how to set up your shopping campaigns the right way for 2024. Let's go. Okay, so when we're in Google Ads, we wanna go into this create, and then from there, you wanna to go to campaign, and obviously we want to be choosing sales. Now, because we're dealing with a shopping campaign, we only really wanna be driving product sales, so what you can do is see how you've got phone call leads here. You can click and remove the phone call leads. Now, the one thing that I wanna stress is what that does, it just removes it from this campaign, not from the account. So you haven't, you know, in one click, removed a conversion action, it's still there. It's just that Google won't be taking that consideration if you were to use any bidding targets further down the track in this account. Then we go through and click continue and we want to be choosing a shopping campaign. Now what you do from here is that you then go through and add in your merchant center feed. If you don't have that, that is something that you will need to do and then you'll need to come back and go through this process. So what we want to do is we're going to add that in here. Now Google is giving the recommendation to because they're going on the performance max bandwagon but we're going to choose the standard shopping campaign. Even after you do that, it still gives you this switch back to Performance Max. But remember at the start of the video, I went through and told you the different scenarios of where we use our standard shopping campaigns. So then go through and click continue. And then you wanna go through and add in a campaign name. Now, if you've watched any of my videos, you know for me, I'm really big on having a campaign naming conventions. What I mean by that is that you wanna know exactly what this campaign is doing. And for this one, we're gonna add in the USA. What we're doing here is, is that we've currently got this account which is performing well in Australia. This business owner wants to take their business over into the USA market. So we're starting off with a shopping campaign over there. And then what we wanna do through here is we're gonna go through and select our bidding. Now, if this was a new 
account and because this is going into a new market, we're just gonna have manual CPC and we're gonna optimize for conversion value. I wouldn't go down into a target ROAS setting until you've got some um, greater campaign data. And then what we wanna do is we wanna go through and add in a budget. So we're gonna start this at $30 a day. Now, this is the section that if you are running this as a remarketing campaign and you've got some other feed campaigns, so whether it be other shopping campaigns or performance max, if you wanted this campaign to take the priority of an ad, that's where you'd go through and select high. We're gonna keep that on low. Now, because we are going into the American market and I do find the US market has some cut through with some different uh, search partners like AOL, I do include it. Anywhere else in the world, I unselect this, but for the US market, I do keep it in there. As we said, we can go through in here and we're gonna be targeting the United States. And the only thing that you can do here is I do select this presence, not presence or interest. And the reason for that is because we're wanting to target people who are currently in the United States, not just people showing interest. And because this is an e-commerce brand, we don't want people who are looking to buy our products, but they're outside of the USA. So that's why we have got uh, presence. And then from here, this brand, they do night lights. So we're gonna put this in as night lights. Now they also got another product range, which is money boxes. I'm gonna show you throughout this process of how to set that up in a separate ad group. I do recommend to set different products in different ad groups. And the reason for that is so that you can then do two things. You can change your target ROAS by ad groups. And then also, if you see one of your product groups performing really, really well, but you wanna add some extra spending into it, that way you can break it out into a separate budget. Now, we know we've done some research. We know the bids need to be about a dollar. But what I like to do is I like to go quite a little bit higher than that. Our average bid will be around about a dollar a click. We're going up to $2. And the reason being is because especially at the start, I don't want there to be anything that limits the performance or the reach of this campaign. Campaign. We go through and click create campaign. Now this campaign isn't completely set up even though it is active in here because as I said, what we wanna do here is that we wanna go through and we wanna filter out. So this is our ad group for night lights. So what we wanna do in here is we wanna add in a subdivision. And what I've done through here is I've just typed in night light. Depending on how you got your feed, ideally I'd recommend you to set up some different custom labels or different product types so it's easier to set up. But for this one, they've just gotta buy the product ID. So what we've done in here, we've just gone through and selected everything in the nightlight. And then what we need to do from here, so what we've done, we've got all of our nightlights in here and then all of the other products, we need to go through and exclude them. And the reason for that is, is because when we then go into our ad groups, we wanna add in a new ad group. And this one is gonna be for the money boxes. Once again, we go and add this subdivision. We're doing it by item ID. And then what we've got in here, when we go down, we've excluded that. Now, if we go into our ad groups, what we've got in through here is in our money boxes ad groups, we're only showing the money box products. And in our night lights ad group, we're only showing our night lights products. And what that can do is a couple of things is that after this campaign is running, if we find that, say for example, the money boxes has an average CPC of $1.50, whereas the night lights has an average CPC of like $2.20, we know that we have to increase this default CPC. If that was then moving to a target ROAS and they had different performances, we could change that and then as I said if we saw that say for example this money boxes was taking about 80% of the spend but the night lights was only getting 20% of the spend but it had a much better conversion ratio or a cost per conversion what we could do is we could then break that out into its own campaign so that's the benefit of adding in some product segmentation straight away when you set up your new shopping campaign and that's how you set up your shopping campaigns in 2024 so once again thank you for joining me and remember that if you missed any of those steps all you need to do is to follow that link in the description below. Now, later on in my Get Google Ready for 2024 series, I will be releasing a video on how to optimize your shopping campaigns. And if you wanna make sure that you don't miss that video or any of my upcoming videos, make sure that you not only subscribe, but also turn on that notification bell so that you know that every time I release a video right here so that you can always have the most up-to-date information for success with Google Ads. Once again, thank you for joining me. My name is Aaron Young and I'm from Define Digital Academy. See you next time.